Welcome to the Pulse with Peter B. I'm your host, Peter Biancomano. Let's get you to the pulse on everything you need to know. And we're here at Il Tavolo di Palmezzano, located at 700 Clinton Street in Hoboken, our favorite Italian restaurant every month. And it is decked out for Valentine's Day. And the person to my right knows all about looking good, whether it's Valentine's for Valentine's Day or not. And of course, that is our Places Insider, Jenna Pimonti of At The Hungry Traveler. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. You know I love it here. Of course you do, I know, I know. When I text Jenna, Il Tavolo, she's, she's like, I'm there. I'm in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So Jenna, what you been up to these uh, last few months? You haven't been on for about a month or so, you know? Yeah, uh, you You've know been ignoring me, me. that's okay. busy. Not ignoring, just busy. Well, the, thankfully, the last time I couldn't make it, I ended up having the flu, so thank God I did not come. Well, thank or God Or I did not that. say I was gonna come, because you would have been down. I would have been probably down and out for this filming, exactly. Yeah. I had much appreciated on that, but, um, you know, uh, the, the decorations. Oh my gosh, so cute in here, as always. They always right. do such a good job decorating for the holidays. I mean, the little hearts everywhere, the twinkly lights. It's really setting the scene. Exactly. It actually makes this mug look really, really good too, huh? <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, well, we got three fabulous dishes right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to have to start with the appetizer, which Let's look absolutely adorable not as adorable as the decorations here but very very adorable talk to me about what we have in this first dish so we have stuffed long peppers so they're stuffed with sausage broccoli rob and then there's some melty provolone cheese on top what mm -hmm. oh my and they're long hots right yeah oh my god those look so good i know i feel like we have to cut right into the middle and just get straight to what it's stuffed with oh goodness and the, the creativity is unbelievable and by the way nice. i mean just to work to actually cut that open and while you dig in, absolutely. Oh man, she took the best bite ever. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, what are you tasting? It's really good. It's not too hot, but it has just that perfect level of spiciness, which they always do well here. I've noticed over time. Um, the sausage, you're really getting the flavor of the broccoli raw. It's all really, it's mixed together really well. Like sometimes you get it too layered. This is mixed in perfectly. Yeah, and in the past, actually, I don't, I don't know if you watched uh, our, the last time we were here, we had Frank Rosner on mm -hmm. filling in for our Places Insider, and he had the orichetti pasta with the broccoli mm -hmm. rob and the sausage. And, you know, he said that was one of the best things he'd had in his life. And I'm sure in the pepper is just as good. Mm -hmm. Oh, just as good. Maybe better. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Maybe we'll try it next time. Oh, look at her. She's already inviting herself. You're invited anytime, Jenna. Let me tell you that much. Exactly. All right. I got to have a rating out of 10. Mm -hmm. What do you think of these long, hot pepper stuff with provolone, a broccoli rabe, and sausage? Nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. Even? Mm -hmm. Oh, kind of a rookie score. Well, you know, I like I'm it. I wish there was more of it. <laughs> I I'm not the biggest on peppers, so it's okay. actually really impressive that I do. Act I really like this. Like, I would eat this whole pepper, and I might when we get off of this. All right. Well, look at that. Well, we know what the crew is taking home after the segment. You know what I'm saying? All right. We are going to try this dish in front of me because it is yes. a pasta dish, right? We got to do the, the antipasta followed by the pasta. You're so followed right. By, right? Come You're on. So right. We have a pimante on the show today, so I'm all about, you know, using my hands. What do we have in this pasta dish? Okay. So we have their spicy big, uh, rigatoni vodka. Mm. So good. I love their spicy vodka sauce. Oh, it's my favorite it here. I've had it here. Last time I was here when it was the chicken parm with vodka sauce. Right. I dream about this. I think about it all the time. I'm dead serious about this sauce. Uh, okay. Well, I already uh, know it's going to be at a got Very, very time. serious for that. I'm feeling uh, very serious about it. It's yeah, so Oh, you know good. what? I, 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 where was my manners, right? I had to take it out of the other spoon. Um, so uh, while you dig into that, look at this rigatoni. You could tell oh, that this goodness. rigatoni is is homemade because look how big it is mm -hmm. i mean it's just that's what you get at il tavolo di palmazano it's the freshness it's you know just the she's just like it's she's already just like, a 10 out of 10 like i already know i like it oh it's well, so good. you can't say the score before i ask come on now here i love this one okay what do you love about it so much it's creamy it has a good spice level you're getting the tomato it's not too creamy you know some people overdo it with the cream the pasta is fresh. Everything about it is delicious. And you hit the nail on the head there. And I do want to talk about vodka sauce because, mm -hmm. you know, vodka sauce is so popular these days, but how many places just don't do it right? You're so right. Right I wrong. completely agree. I so mean, right. Some places they go too hard with the spice too. And then you like, you're sweating. You can barely eat it. This is the perfect spice level. It comes from those uh, hot cherry peppers that they put in here. Yeah. 
It's just so perfect, good. right? So perfect. It's a perfect balance. I can eat I, this all day. And I'm telling you, I think I don't know if they used a little too much flour in there. I mean, God, they used too much vodka. I think we're, we're all, no. all going to complain about that, right? But anyway, I mean, and, and this and, and and they stay over sauce. This looks mm -hmm. like it's sauced perfectly. It's perfect. Everything about it. This is might be my favorite dish here. I love all the dishes, so it's hard to say, it's hard to give it to one. But I do. I think about this a lot. And by the way, folks, we invited her back next week. But anyway, <laughs> maybe next week you'll have a new favorite dish, though. We'll maybe see. I will. Or maybe what's up next, right? Yeah. But before we move on, uh, you know, I, I know you already ranked it before you ranked it, but Jenna, what do you rank uh, this spicy rigatoni? 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10, breaking the Richter And 11 scale. is my lucky number, so that means that's good. Wow. Ah. Yeah. I wouldn't just, I wouldn't go that high for anybody. I have to pause here. Why is 11 your lucky number? Um, my birthday is the 11th of of March. Okay, yes. well, got to put that in my calendar. Yeah, so it's um, just always been my number kind of right. thing. All right, 11 out of 10. I absolutely love it. All right, we have one more dish, and I'm Let's not going to be rude. It's a dish closer to you. Here is the main, or as I like to call it, folks, the big mama jamma, which is, of course, the entree tonight. What do you got? So we have a special. So it is Naples style amberjack fish which I've never had before, so I'm really excited to try. Wait, wait, wait. what type of fish? Amberjack. What? I, I'm sorry to say I never heard of amberjack fish. I've never heard about it before either, so I did a little Google before this, and they say it tastes like a cross between mahi-mahi and tuna, so I'm excited to try it. I love mahi-mahi. Oh, um, It has a chipotle aioli on top. There's corn. I'm really excited to get into it. Is it, it looks just like corn? It's blackened, like a crispy, good layer on there, too. Mm, Man, and, and I have to tell you, this is another it. dish that is a little different than you'll see in an Italian restaurant, which, mm -hmm. you know, is, is just what you get here at Il Tavolo di Famozano. It is, it is so unique on so many different levels. And, and huh, we have a, a lesson on what amberjack fish is, right? Yeah. So, oh, you just cut that, that I know, so it perfectly. so good. Oh my God, it's get a little blackened. Bit of everything. No, look at her go. Look at her go. The bite here. Mm, oh. Gonna try this. You don't have to tell me twice. Get in here, Peter. Yeah. Oh, really I'm going to get in here. I am a huge fish fan, I know. Me too. Oh, Ooh, talk to me. That is really good. Mm. I feel like because I had no expectations because I've never had the fish before, it's just exceeding. Like, it's just going higher than I thought it was going to go. Wow. That is so good. And I have to tell you, the only fish I really don't like mm -hmm. is a tuna. Yeah. But it's not very tuna-y. If, if, if no, it's more mahi-mahi in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, I like it a lot. And is it, 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 it I feel like it's a very refreshing dish as well with mm -hmm. the corn, no? I agree. I was thinking the same thing. This was feeling like warmer months to me, really putting me where, where I want to be instead of the cold. Yeah. I love it. It was so good. 10 out of 10. I know ten you're going to ask. So. 10 out of 10. She already said it. You know? Well, and on the Peter scale, this is also a 10 out of 10. So, you know, we are just love breaking it. Richter's. Cause, boy, we averaged about a 9.5, 9.6 out of 10. Mm -hmm. That's how you know the food is always wonderful. It'll top of the Always. And Jonah, I have to ask, we have about a minute left here. Mm -hmm. Why, if, if you were on a date mm -hmm. for Valentine's Day, or they're even doing a gallon Valentine's Day on Tuesday, February 13th, exactly, mm -hmm. throw that out there for our good friend Frank and his brother who are the owner here, why wouldn't you come to Il Tavolo di Pomposano? Oh my God, why wouldn't you? It's decorated so cute. You know you're going to have a really good meal. Like if you're going to impress someone or you just want to have a good meal with your gal pals, like this is the place to go because you know you're getting the whole experience that you're looking for. Amen. Well, Jenna P. Be Monty. I was missed doing that. You know what I mean? Um, at the Hungry Traveler, our place is insider. You promise you're going to come back next week promise. here, right? Well, you know, I'll be right here blending in with the curtains. I'll be curtains. right here. All right. I absolutely oh, love it. I know. Oh, yeah. You just you're noticed so that, right. right? I know. I know. You pointed it out. I, I totally just pointed it out. Exactly. What am I going to do? Um, thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, me too. All right, folks, from Il Tavolo di Palmazano, located at 700 Clinton Street in the beautiful city of Hoboken, New Jersey. We will be right back. Peter Biancomano, your hostess with the mostest of the Pulse with Peter B. Folks, don't forget to go on our Facebook and our Instagram pages by searching The Pulse with Peter B and like and follow us on each of those platforms. We're constantly updating those pages with previews of each week's segments and cool stories. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our email address at thepulsewithpeterb at gmail.com. Welcome back. I'm your host with the most, Josh Sotomayor Einstein, and I'm so much better than that bum, Bianca Mano as is my guest, my friend, 
Lee Higgins, one of the leading sound healing coaches in town. And I can't say how much that I have learned about sound healing uh, and, and, and also sound bathing. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, Josh, pleasure to be here. Great to see you again. Um, so yeah, I'm a professional coach and I do sound healing as one of my practices along with breath work and meditation. And so I work with people so that they can um, like kind of like live into the best version of themselves. And so the, like the way it starts out is like we all have these stories that we've, we tell ourselves about the world and how the world works and who we are. But some of those stories were created a really long time ago. And they are, but they're still running. They become these like sub subconscious programs that run within us. And so as we get older, um, some of those stories don't really serve us. But it's really hard to change. So like this is January, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone's doing the, the yoga and the dry January and g going to the gym, right? But those things take a lot of willpower. And eventually that willpower runs out and we run back to those old patterns and they just start happening over again. So the practices that I work with uh, in sound healing and meditation and breath work, they're the ways to connect us with our subconscious mind. And that is the way that we're able to make those changes. So like a really interesting fact is from zero to seven kids are in this brainwave state called a theta brainwave state. So it's like, what that means is like, they're just a sponge, right? So every, they take in everything around them. It's just absorbing everything. Just absorb everything. And that's how they figure out who they are and how the world works and how they're supposed to respond to life. Um, but those get outdated. And so when people get older, like you can be the president or CEO of a company and have huge outer success, but then something triggers you and all of a sudden you go back to being a seven-year-old, like how you, how you responded back then. Um, because it was programmed back then. Exactly. Yeah. And so the way to change those stories rather than willpower is to reconnect with that subconscious mind, to get into that other brainwave state. And you can do those through these practices of sound healing, breath work, meditation. They put you in an expanded state of consciousness. And so you connect with a part of yourself. So one of the things that you learn in this journey mm -hmm. is that you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions, you're not your body. You're really just this awareness that's behind it all. And so you can call it like the observer in your life. And that part of you can watch everything. It knows everything about you and knows the best way forward for your greatest good and greatest healing. And so when we do practices like sound healing, you get into that brainwave state, you connect with that part of you, and then you start to see yourself from a more compassionate perspective. You start to get insights and messages about what would be best for help you move forward and to change some of those patterns. And then you go out into your life and you start to practice those things. And so there's the experience where you get the messages. And then a really important part is most of us push down all of these feelings that are uncomfortable. We push them away where they get held in our body and they cause us a lot of suffering. We feel uncomfortable in ourselves. But when we are able to um, allow those to come up and really feel them, then we let go of them. And that creates space to create a new story. And these, so these expanded states allow us to go through that process of creating awareness around who we are and, and the, the patterns that are limiting us and then allow us to feel the things that are coming up. And then the second part of it is, or the last part of it is to go out into the world and how do we actually make those changes? So we take, when we go out and, um, and so, something that would normally trigger us, um, we have that we can remember, we can pause, we can remember that insight that came up and then we can make a more conscious choice about what, how we want to respond. And then, so that's actually being unconscious versus being on autopilot running mm. those old programs. And so then it's, it's, you know, it's a practice for sure. You know, we're human beings. When you describe the, the old behavior as being on autopilot, it reminds me of, you know, certain times in my life where I've had a knee jerk reaction to something as opposed to thinking, thinking it through and evaluating whether or not you know, the possible outcomes were the possible outcomes that I really desired. And that really thinking about the, the likely possible outcome, you know, if I acted in the knee-jerk fashion, would be the opposite of what, you know, my most ideal outcome would be. So it sounds a lot like what you're talking about 
or at least what I'm hearing, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, sure. is you know really good introspection. You know, like both knowing yourself and also being aware of how you interact with the world, and then trying to change that for a more positive way. Yeah. So we're all trained to go out into the world and, and accomplish and do all these things in the outer world, but then we, we, we do those things and we don't feel that sense of peace, fulfillment, connection to ourselves, to the to our in our relationships. We have a lot more conflict and. But so the only way that we can find those feelings that we're looking for is to go on an inward journey. But we're not really trained or taught how to do those things. Um, but when we do do them, then we, our experience of life totally shifts. We, we get to know ourselves in a much more powerful way. We show up differently in our lives. Our relationships shift. And, you know, then also, you know, there's a bigger piece of it, too, where, you know, we connect to what's greater than us. So that kind of like moves into the spiritual realm a little bit. But if we, if we don't have access to that, um, then we can feel alone, we can feel separate, and we don't really, uh, yeah, it's hard. So, now when you're talking about this journey, what, what, what brought you to sound healing and breathing coaching and, and, and everything that you were talking about? Yeah, so the, it's just my story, right? I have a 30-year career in the corporate finance, and, and I did that career, but then I wasn't happy. I had that feeling in my heart that wasn't being fulfilled. And so I just went like looking for things and I tr tried all these different practices and had amazing experiences. And then I went out and did that integration piece where I'm practicing those new stories. And then my life shifts, my relationships, my family, my friends, they all started to, you know, be so much healthier and happier. And I started feeling those things that I wanted to feel. And so then I just explored more practices and now I share them with people. Well, that's terrific. Now, if someone out there in TV land and on the interweb uh, wants to, you know, have you as a, you know, sound healing guide, coach, uh, where, where would they go? Yeah, so my website is leehiggins.net. And um, I also do workshops here at an amazing yoga studio, studio called Urban Souls Yoga Studio in town. It's on 100 Hudson Street. That's where all the workshops happen, breath work, sound healing sound baths and um, meditation and yeah. All right, so we only got a, about a minute left. What is some sort of mindful introspection that you could leave people out there uh, that are viewing this with? Yeah, so sound is, is, a, is a big thing, but one really easy thing that you can do um, when you're feeling overwhelmed, too much emotional energy is to, is to breathe, right? It's really, um, simple and easy. You breathe in and out through your nose. You breathe deeply into your belly. So, and then let it all out. Breathe nice and slowly out. And if you just do about 10 of those breaths, right, your whole body calms down. Your physical body aligns. Your emotions become more neutral. Your head gets more clear. And so that whatever decision you have to make, whatever you have to do going forward, is you're going to make much better decisions because you're conscious. One of the reasons, I, I know we only got like 20 seconds left, but one of the reasons I really enjoyed when we met and having this conversation on air that is important to me is because we live in absolutely insane, crazy times, and we never know what's around the corner. We can't control the big macro, but we can try to control, and for the better, ourselves and how we react to things. Yeah. Well, Lee, thanks so much for coming on. Pleasure, Josh. Truly appreciate it. All right. Out there in TV land and on the interwebs, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Peter Biancamano back with you. Don't forget to watch us on Cable Access every Sunday and Monday at 9 a.m. Optimum Channel 18, Files Channel 46, and Comcast Channel 190. Also on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., you can watch our show on our YouTube channel, and you can also binge watch all of our old shows. Who doesn't want to keep watching The Pulse with Peter B? We'll see you there. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. Still here at the beautiful Il Tavolo di Palmazano, located at 700 Clinton Street in the beautiful city of Hoboken, New Jersey. And I dropped beautiful three times in 15 seconds. So why not drop it one more time for our next guest? And of course, that is the Pulse Medical Insider, the beautiful Dr. Tina Shaw. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Exactly. Are you excited <laughs> to be back on? 
I mean, can you tell? I'm <laughs> ecstatic. Ecstatic. I absolutely love that. Well, Dr. Shaw, the last time you were on the program, we touched up on medical uh, New Jersey pre-authorization, medical pre-authorizations. Wow, say that 10 times fast, right? Um, and you were saying that the bill was being passed in the New Jersey legislature. Um, it was through the assembly and I believe needed to go to the Senate, or am I getting that the opposite? Uh, the opposite. It was the about opposite. to get it was to the through assembly. through the Senate, and yeah. then it was going to get to the assembly, and now it's passed. It's crazy. I know. Talk to me about it. Okay, so you know what? It's like that old thing that we used to watch when we were kids. This is how a bill became a law, and our governor signed this bill into law. So quick? So quick. I mean, is there like an election coming up? Do they want? <laughs> well, I mean, I think Governor Murphy's doing a great job, I especially on this one. He's doing a terrific job for this day. But yeah. how huge is this now? It's huge. So mm -hmm. let me let me just refresh everyone's memory sure. as to what's at stake. And you know, I'm going to start with a personal story. When patients come to see me, we can decide on something. Hey, maybe you need a new medicine. Maybe you need to get an MRI. You know, there's some usual step that we need to do. But what I hate is that there's a third person in the office, and it's actually the insurance company. When it really should just be about me and the person in front of me deciding what's appropriate for their medical care. Mm. So what this bill actually does is take the insurance companies out of the office where they don't belong. And I'll just list it out for you. For the first time, we now have the ability to regulate and kind of tamp down the use of pre-authorizations. That is that extra step that your doctor has to take, even though you both determine there's some critical medicine or service that you need. So. What's happening right now, it takes 15 days to hear from insurance companies. That's the maximum amount that they're allowed by law. Now with this new law, it's going to be 72 hours. And if it's an urgent thing, within 24 hours that we have to hear back from the insurance companies whether or not things have been approved. And, and we spoke about this the last time you were on. This could be life or death. Am I right or wrong? That's right. That's right. Um, I mean, I'm, I can just think of, I'm just going to share this because I know my mom's okay with it, but oh, right. my mom had chest pain, which means that she might be having a heart attack coming up, which means that she needed a cardiac catheterization and she had her prior authorization denied. It's unbelievable. So thank God nothing happened to her. She's in great health, but we don't want this to happen to anyone else. Nobody. And, 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 and the doctors were saying that she needed a... Uh, a cath, correct? Right. And and the insurance was like, no, she doesn't. That's right. That's Isn't right. That insane. It is. But wow. you know, beyond this, there's one. There's a few other pieces I want to share. One, mm -hmm. when you submit a preauthorization and it gets denied, we now have to we ensure that on the on the insurance company side, a doctor that's knowledgeable, that's in the same specialty, has to come back and talk to the prescribing doctor. Wow. Before that, we sometimes didn't even have access to a doctor on the insurance company. And then the last thing I'll say is that. Now insurance companies have to tell us how many times they make denials. I mean, this oh, that's is a first. Great. Yeah. Hold them accountable, right? We will. So yeah. when this goes into effect on January 1st, 2025, I'm going to be there. Are you? Uh, amen. I'll be, I'll be standing right next to you. Congratulations. Thank this you. This is huge. I know you were a huge proponent of this. And obviously this was done with uh, local legislative help and all the way up to the governor's office. So this is a good thing for the folks at home. It yeah, really and, and can I just give a shout out to sure. all the doctors, nurses, and folks that live in New Jersey that sent sent letters. We had several thousand letters sent to our legislators, and that's what really turned the tide. Unbelievable. Well, great incredible. job again, Dr. Shaw. And we're so happy that you could report it right here on The Pulse. We really are. So, you know, Dr. Shaw, we were talking uh, last week about what else, uh, you know, we were going to discuss during this segment, this monthly segment with our new medical insider. I can continue saying that. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and one of the things that you brought up was sleep. And the, I mean, it is. It, it seems like it's so simple because people are tired all the time and so on and so forth. But when you sent me the notes before the segment started, you said that one in three adults are not getting enough sleep. That is insane. That's 33.3% of the population. I mean, uh, what causes people to stay up at night? I mean, do, do you need me to say it? Instagram, <laughs> Snapchat, LinkedIn, pick your poison, right? YouTube. That's the problem. And that really is poison, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it is. But, but you know, in all seriousness, yeah. this is crazy that one third, only one third of, you know, th this is a crazy statistic. And the truth is, most of us need eight to 10 hours of sleep. You know, you eight can. Eight to 10? That's right. 
Yeah. But the average is probably like six out there, correct? It's it's definitely much less. Wow. Um, so here here's like the litmus test. When you wake up, do you feel good? Do you feel rested? And if you're doing quiet activities during the day, let's say you're watching TV, you just had lunch, you're just sitting, do you feel still awake or do you fall asleep? If you fall asleep, that's a sign that either you're not getting enough sleep or there's some other mischief going on. Well, yeah. I mean, and and what normally, what actions would prevent a person from not sleeping well uh, right before their bedtime? Yeah, well, I'd like to I'd like to propose that we go through the five things that you can do to make okay, sure. Okay, so we'll start with what you can do to get okay. you better sleep. I like that. Okay, let's. She can tell she's a doctor. Start with the pros, <laughs> then we'll go with the cons. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So we kind of mentioned this already, but we we are too close to our screens when we go to sleep. We need at least an hour. But honestly, as a pulmonary and critical care doc who's trained in sleep too, if you can push it to two hours with no screen time before you go to sleep, there's something about the light coming in your eyes that makes it tough to. Get get a super deep restful sleep. That's the first thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The second thing is you need to have a routine. Wake up at the same time, sleep at the same time. And in that routine, you also need to have a wind down. You know, we do it when we're babies, but we don't do it when we're further, you know, when we get older, but we still need that routine to keep consistent. Um, did you know that you need to move every day? And if you don't, it actually impacts your sleep. Like like physically move? Like go That's to the right. gym or anything like that? Or even just walk, right? Yeah, yeah. It can be as simple as walking, but wow. exercise is ironically critical to resting. I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I try to go to the gym four times a week. That's four way more times Show than a off. resident. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's four way more times than a resident political analyst. Josh Sotomayor, Einstein goes to the gym, but different story for a different time. But I tell you, I definitely feel more tired when I go to the gym than when I don't. Yeah. And we need to get a little tired. Um, absolutely. The other thing is to watch what you're doing with food and caffeine. Did you know that caffeine can last even in excess of eight hours? Eight right? hours? Yeah. So those people drinking coffee at dinner. Right. That's gonna problematic. Keep them up at night. That's right. Wow. Even eating a large meal really close to going to sleep, that's problematic too. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So, Dr. Shaw, uh, you know, uh, how do you kind of press this information into people? I mean, I mean, you know, obviously, if you're not sleeping, you're more hungry. So then you're going to become overweight. Why is that, by the way? Yeah. So you bring up some really good points. Um, you know what happens when we don't sleep so much? We lose our ability to regulate ourselves. Mm. One, there are hormonal changes that result in having that increased sense of hunger, but you also lose your, some, to some extent, your ability for self-control. It's not just food, but, but this is a big one. So, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, you really need to start with sleeping properly. Unbelievable. And if you, when do you think you should go see a doctor? Um, uh, you know, uh, whether it's too loud snoring or so on and so forth. Yeah, that's right. So first go through these steps. And I forgot to mention the fifth. The fifth is make sure you have a cool, quiet, dark environment, but go through the sleep five. If that doesn't work, you might want to see a doctor. If you're snoring a lot or mm -hmm. if your partner or someone observes you gasping when you're sleeping, you should definitely go see a doctor. Could be sleep apnea, correct? That's right. And yeah. we don't want to we don't want to mess around with that. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Tina Shaw, we are out of time unfortunately. Thank you so much and I'll make sure that I need to increase my sleep uh, time every night. And again, congratulations on the bill being passed. Um, just a huge huge effort with a lot of different people and I'm going to say led by you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Our medical insider Dr. Tina Shaw, thank you again. Really appreciate it. All right, folks, join us next week for The Pulse on everything you need to know. I'm Peter Biancomano. I hope you have a great week, everybody. 